or the second one was actually from Abdul Rahman ibn Awf. The first one was from uh, Abu Rahman ibn Awf. So what is the word for the womb in Arabic? Rahim, right? And what is the uh, two, two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we say all the time? Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. And so in the Hadith Qudsi, it says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Ana Ar-Rahman, I am Ar-Rahman. And I have created the Rahim. So it's not just later day speakers trying to come up with some cool connections between words. It's in the Hadith Qudsi itself. وَشَقَقْتُ لَهَا مِنْ إِسْمِي SubhanAllah He said, I have given the womb from my own name. He's Ar-Rahman, he's called it Ar-Rahim. To show how important it is. He said, I have given the womb or the Rahim from my name. So why are all of us here today? All of us are here today because we want to get connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, borrowing from the theme that the brothers came up with for the talk last night. We're here because we want to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sometimes we don't see and it's right in front of our face. We're like, okay, I'm praying, I'm reading Quran, I'm fasting Mondays and Thursdays, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. How come I don't feel the impact of Iman in my heart? How come the Quran is it's not impacting me? And it sometimes is as obvious as that person did not call his mother in a while <laughs> or his father is uh, not being honored the way that he should be or uh, he is not speaking to his brother his blood brother over some financial issue and it's, it's right here in the hadith it says whoever maintains the rahim then I will also maintain the connection to him man wa salah wa saltu it's very clear. I mean, it's not parsing any words. He said, whoever cuts his family relations, then I also I cut that person off too. So it's a very severe topic indeed tonight. Also, we uh, quoted uh, the ayah from Surah Al-Furqan, which, uh, subhanAllah, is a very interesting ayah to me. And uh, I hope that y'all will be able to, to help me to extract uh, some of the, the wisdom uh, from this particular ayah. So he said, وَهُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ مِنَ الْمَاءِ So he created us from what? In the, in the, according to this ayah, from water. What is the chemical formula for water? I have to use some. We were in Texas a a lot of scientists are out here. What is it? H2O, which is what? Two hydrogen molecules and the oxygen molecule. What else do you know about water? Okay, what's the density of water? Come on, guys. We're gram at, per uh, cubic centimeter. One gram per centimeter cube, right? What's your major? Biochemistry. Biochemistry. Okay, so you're going to tell us everything about water. It's life. It might, it might call it, it might be We can call your major water, right? So, subhanAllah, here's the water. Here we go. Bismillah. So, um, what other properties of water do we know? Is it, what type of molecule is the water molecule? It's a polar. polar molecule, which means that it has oxygen. the oxygen is a more electronegative and then the hydrogen. Okay, how about let's go connect it now to family because it's in the verse. I, I'm not making this up, subhanAllah. It's in the verse. He said, Who will let you He said, He created the human being from water and He made him nasab. What is nasab? And what is nasab? Nasab is your, your blood line, like your father, your mother, your brother, your sister. These are all your Nasab. What about Sihra? Is your relation to what? Where the brother? You don't know Sihra. Sihri, what do you say Sihri? Uh, Arkan wants to tell us. <laughs> see, everybody says quite a Yeah, what is, a, what is when you say Sihri? What, is, what you are you referring to? Like me and you, right? So like, we're brothers-in-law. Right? So that's the Siddha. Is your relation through marriage? Okay, so now let's go back to water because I really, you know, it's just really amazing, you know. So water, what do we know about uh, the properties of water? Why does water, you know, stick together? What do we call that? Cohesion. 
Oh, my son, he just, he just took a class with all about water. He's going to take get all the answers. He's going to get all the uh, A's today, my son. So cohesion, so water molecules, they are attracted to one another. And also adhesion, they're attracted to other surfaces. So I'm not going to keep on talking about water. But when you think about the properties of water and you compare that to the human being, the human being's nature is to form connections and to have that cohesion which comes through the family. And it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He said He created the human being out of this water. SubhanAllah. Um, also the, the hadith Qudsi that we said that the Rahim pleads with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I will uh, again um, connect those who uh, connect you and I will cut those who sever the relations with you. We know also from Surah Al-Baqarah that the ones who spread the fasad and the fisk in the earth, and this is also shown in statistics, I don't prepare them uh, with me today, but I'm sure you can just go to Sheikh Google and find it very easily. The statistics of those who commit crimes, how many of them don't even know who their fathers are? They come from dysfunctional or, or even non-existent families. And so Allah SWT connects the fisk. He said, uh, what does he say in Surah Al-Baqarah at the end of Inna Allah la yastahi? They cut what Allah commanded to be joined. What comes right after that? A lot of us, we get enthusiastic, we start memorizing Quran, we start with Al-Baqarah. So I think a lot of you know this first part of Allah. وَيُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Right after cutting what Allah commanded to be joined is fasad in the earth, in the earth, in the earth. So, in this way, Allah subhanahu wa taala He shows us the great importance of this matter. Uh, also, because if we want to gain anything, we want to start with uh, the best of speech, which is the Quran, and also with the best of teachers, which is the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, sometimes when we hear the word about responsibility, we say, oh, that's somebody else. That's the person who has a title of CEO, or president, etc. But the Prophet ﷺ, in the deen which he transmitted to us, he says, no, it's different than that. It's not just if you have a title. It's just by having a name. Just by being a human being and reaching the sin or the age of puberty. So, and Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu maqar, sami'atu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, kullukum you guys will help me tonight. Maybe you can do like a pop quiz. Kullukum what? Ra'in. Maybe you all heard this in many khutbas, right? Okay, so kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'oolun an ra'iyyati. So all of you, if you want to translate ra' literally like a shepherd or a person who is responsible. And each of you will be asked or is responsible for his flock. So he starts with, yes, al-imam. So imam here is not talking about the person who's leading the prayer of the masjid is talking about a ruler. So an imam ra'in wa mas'oolun an ra'iyyatih. So the imam, he is a shepherd, he is responsible for his ra'iyyah. That's why the Prophet وسلم, he actually made a dua for the rulers and against the rulers. He said, Allahumma man waliya min ummati shay'an fa rafiqa bihim farfuq bih wa man waliya min ummati shay'an fa shakka alayhim fa shakuk alayhim. And one Dua, he said, whoever is entrusted with any of the affairs of my ummah and is good to them and gentle to them, then also be good and gentle to him. And whoever is entrusted with any of the affairs of my ummah and is very harsh on the people, very difficult, and so he's saying, oh Allah, also be difficult on him. Right. So that was the first one. But then, what rajul? So, mashallah, we have many rijal here. Rajul ra'an fi ahlihi. So again, Alhamdulillah, it's good that we have you know sisters stepping up in Islamic work and you know it's welcome, alhamdulillah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he, he says the man is responsible in his family. But I want to go and extend a little bit beyond that. So I encourage inshallah ta'ala those brothers who are in the community uh, to step up. If you are a brother, inshallah ta'ala, you have talents, you have abilities. Uh, yes, it's good to see the sisters active, but we also need to see the brothers stepping up. 
But going back to this hadith, it says the man is responsible in his family. How is he responsible? Is it just that uh, he provides the... I was going to say something that we don't eat. <laughs> uh, that he just provides the uh, uh, kebabs. That's it. Uh, what does it mean that he is maskur? What do you think that means? Let me get you guys to uh, get engaged. So the brothers or sisters, you're welcome. What do you think that means? That a rajul maskur uh, or rajul fi ahlihi maskur an raiyatihi. What do you think that means? That a rajul is the man is responsible. That's actually what makes him a man. It's the responsibility. But we're going to get to the woman also. Uh, I only know a few few names, so that some of the names you're going to be on the spot, I'll say your name. <laughs> what do you think that means, Faisal? Mashallah. What do you think, Faisal, it means that a man is responsible for the affairs uh, in his household or of his family? I know it's been a long week and I've been studying hard. Uh, basically making sure that the, the kids are raised in a proper household. Okay, so that's a good one, an important one, to make sure that the children are raised up in the deen correctly, right? So the famous story where a father came complaining to Umar ibn Khattab and he said, my son is being very disobedient, very rebellious, all these kind of things. And so Umar of course, being a wise judge, you have to hear both sides of the story. Someone comes crying and screaming, make sure you hear the other side <laughs> before you even in your heart take any stance. So he said, okay, bring your son. And so what did the son say? He said, uh, what are the rights of the son? Because we know about the, we hear it all the time, right? The rights of the parent are this one. So he asked Umar, what are the rights of the son? So he said to him that he names him a good name, that he uh, teaches him uh, the deen. Um, and uh, I forgot the third one that he mentioned to him. If somebody remembers, they will tell us, inshallah. Uh, so then he said, well, as for uh, the name that my father gave me, something like, uh, some word like, that means a dung beetle. <laughs> That's the name. And as for, oh, he said that, you have to, that he should choose a good mother for you, meaning when he chooses a wife. He needs to choose one that will also be a good mother. And he said, as for uh, my mother, he chose to marry a Zoroastrian <laughs> woman. Um, and as for the deen, he didn't even teach me a single, you know, a single thing from this deen. So Umar radiallahu he looked at the father, he said, you know, why, why are you uh, complaining? You are only, uh, you know, reaping uh, what you have sown. In any case, um, the woman is also responsible. في بيتي زوجها the woman is also responsible in the household of her husband, in the home of her husband, and she is responsible for her flock. And the servant is responsible for the money. We have many stories, again, y'all probably know a lot of them uh, about these kind of uh, topics. The khadim is also responsible for the uh, money of his master. And also, all of you are raw, and all of you are masoon an raiyat. So nobody can escape this, unless a person, you know, is, is, a, is a child, but they soon also become uh, adults uh, as well. Now this, uh, inshallah, I'm going to start getting go further into the topic, but I just wanted to start with the Quran and Hadith. That way we at least leave with something, uh, you know, from the best of guidance. So I'll just conclude with this Hadith, and then we'll go into the topic at hand uh, in a different a different angle inshallah ta'ala. So this is how important what I want to inculcate within myself and inshallah ta'ala that reaches the brothers uh, by Allah's permission. Um, how important this is, this responsibility that we have uh, just as being human beings, whether being a sister, being a brother, um, how important is this? An Abi Ya'la Ma'qal ibn Yasar radiallahu anhu qal sami'atu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul ma min abdin yastar'ihi Allah ra'iyyatan yamutu yawma yamutu wa huwa khashun liri'iyyatihi illa harram Allahu alayhi al-jannah This is the uh, narration in Bukhari al-Muslim and then in another narration falam yahutha binushihi wa lam yajid I said, لم يجد رائحة الجنة 
And then another narration for just Muslim, he said, مَا مِنْ أَمِيرٍ يَلِي أُمُورَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ ثُمَّ لَا يَجْهَدُ لَهُ وَيَنْصَحُ لَهُ So this is what we, how we should handle the responsibility. يَجْهَدُ لَهُ وَيَنْصَحُ لَهُ إِلَّا لَمْ يَدْخُلْ مَعَهُمُ الْجَنَّةِ So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, any person that Allah has given, and we just heard from the previous hadith, everybody is given some level of responsibility. Because he said, كُلُّكُمْ رَاعِرُ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْرُورُ So we can't escape this hadith. Again, we can't just say, and you know, I, I myself included, you know, it's very easy from the pulpits to condemn the leaders and how terrible they are. But then we have to see, what about our own, what, what are we like? Are we tyrannical in our own homes? Are we tyrannical uh, in our own societies, in our own communities? If we were put in the position of governing, uh, a nation, would we uh, become even more dictatorial and tyrannical and brutal than even those that we are condemning? So the Prophet ﷺ, he said that whenever Allah entrusts someone with something, meaning in this case another human being, the affairs of other human beings, and this is not a light thing. You, and, and that's why again with the story of Umar he said even that when you're choosing a wife, you want to try to elicit Will she, as best as you can tell, also be a good mother? When a sister is choosing a husband, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, make sure that it's a person of taqwa, a person of khuluq and deen, because this will be a person who will be a father as well, and a leader in his household. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, if you are entrusted, anybody who's entrusted with something of the affairs of another human being, and then that person is to die, and he is betraying his trust towards them. He is not fulfilling what he owes to them. He said, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes Jannah forbidden for him. Makes Jannah forbidden. SubhanAllah. And of course, if we go into the details, it will be conditional things. But if you just take the apparent meaning of the hadith, it's saying that if a person is entrusted with the affairs of another and then does not fulfill it, in the way that it should be fulfilled, and definitely if he is deceiving and betraying and usurping and taking advantage and uh, lining his pockets and all those kind of things, um, or just even neglectful in certain cases, he said then paradise is forbidden for that person. SubhanAllah. Um, and then in another narration, he said if he doesn't surround his ra'iyya, so your flock, so if you are. Uh, president in the MSA, or you are uh, a mother, or you are an employer, and you have certain responsibility towards people around you. He said you need to surround them بِنُصْحِهِ It's a very nice uh, image. It's, you encompass them not with fear and terror, but نُصْحِ That they know you want the best for them, and everything you're doing is just for the best for them. So that even for our teachers who are very like stern and disciplined and all this, you can feel which ones are just hateful and <laughs> spiteful and they have their own issues and they take it out of the poor little kids. <laughs> and you can tell the ones who really just want them, um, you know, I, I see them in the, in the masjid, they're doing the Hibs program, you know, want to finish their sabak, right? And like, <laughs> you can see which ones really care, which ones. And then they have to, if they don't do it, they have to cut up and down, pull their ears, and feel sorry for them sometimes. But I guess since you can't hit them here, they make them do other kind of things to punish them. Right? But then that, that student or that child, and definitely the parents, they can see, oh, this person is because he, he's actually, even though it looks like apparently it's not, it's not a kind uh, thing that he's doing there, and we can debate different ways and modalities for teaching, but it's all for nusr toward that person because he wants him to succeed in his mission for example of memorizing the Quran in the case of a father or mother or husband or wife so the husband his concern is not am I getting what I need to get from this marriage am I getting what I need to get out of this and the wife should be thinking am I getting what I need to get rather the question is am I enveloping and surrounding the other person in whom I have a relationship with, with nusr. Right? Um, you know, sometimes the, 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 the sisters, they get upset, you know, they say, whenever we go to the imams, they just say, make dua and make dhikr. Of course we should say, <laughs> to do, but, but at least, you know, a wife, she makes dua for her husband, not against her husband. 
Right? A husband make dua for his wife. This is Muslim, right? Um, so like the, the joke they say about uh, Egyptian uh, scholars and Shayla like to make jokes. He said that the Imam was talking about paradise and that a person would see his Hur al Eid and then finally he, he will see his wife <laughs> that he used to have in dunya. And so one from the audience said, Oh, the Sheikh, why are you going to bring her again in Jannah? Why are you going to bring her in this dunya? No offense to the sisters, of course, because we can also make jokes about the brothers. And why, the wife can say, Why do I have to? But this is the attitude. He said, you need to have this nusr. And if we don't encompass those to whom we are responsible with nusr, that we actually care for, genuinely want them to be better, genuinely want them to be prosperous in dunya and akhirah. Again, subhanAllah, even stronger uh, wording. He said he, he can't even uh, find or acquire ra'ihat al-jannah. He can't even acquire the fragrance of jannah. Can't even get that close. Right? And then the third narration was uh, now the level of the Umarah, the Amir. He said that, uh, and also for anybody responsible, if that person doesn't make juhud, and it doesn't just say amal, he said, Thumma la yajhad lahum. So you have a son or daughter, it's a mujahada, it's a type of struggle that you're making, this great energy and, and effort in the relationship. Um, and the same word that we talked about. What did we say uh, was? What is nasiha? Yeah. Either you guys are all sleepy or you're like, know this and like, why is he asking this stuff? We know already. What is nasiha? I mean, I know the answer that many of us want to give is advice, right? But College Station, mashallah, is an educated community. So what is the deeper meaning for nasiha? Huh? Purification, okay. So when we say, "Punna liman ya Rasulullah," he said, "Lillah." So how can we make nusr to Allah? We can't give Allah advice. So what does nusr to Allah mean? Sincerity. Okay, there you go. Sincerity, right? So nusr is the person again is sincere in doing everything. So part of sincerity is if you see somebody and um, he he uh, has. Uh, let's say, for example, uh, a button that was unbuttoned uh, not correctly. <laughs> your nasiha is, hey, you need to fix your button, right? He's not even like, why did you even like point that out? I'm so angry with you. No, because he knows it's for his. This is the nasiha being sincere. He doesn't want him to look um, uh, in, a, in a way that's not presentable, so, as an example. So let's, inshallah ta'ala, uh, go further and look to the Qur'an. We said, uh, the Muslim family between the Qur'anic ideal. Now even though we use the word Qur'anic ideal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very fairly in the Qur'an, He shows us that everything is not ideal. <laughs> so, uh, again, you know, I'm looking inshallah ta'ala to you guys to, to help us out here. So, from the Qur'an, you can just name names. Uh, tell me any husband-wife relationship that you can tell me from the Qur'an. We will see how many we can find inshallah. Yes, husband-wife relationship. Just give us their names. Fir'aun and Asiya. Right? It's very unexpected. The worst uh, tyrant. And one of the four best women. Sa'il Alami. Right? By the way, what are the... Maybe I'll get the sisters. Who are the four best women from the hadith? So we, we already have one. Okay, they're discussing. Oh, Fatima al-Zahra radiallahu anha, yes? Okay, Khadija we said, okay. Maryam and we just said. So this is, we said, okay, Quranic ideal. What is the Quran? This is a tyrant and this is a woman. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that life is not, everything is just roses and so on. Her husband, right, Fir'aun, he was persecuting her. He was tying her up and torturing her and she was just giving Rabbi ibn li indaka bayt she doesn't even want a palace in Jannah he just wants a bayt, a house in Jannah just to when a jinni min fir'aun wa amalihi when a jinni save me from fir'aun and his this is why again for between Muslims uh, that they say that the woman who is patient uh, with the uh, uh, 
the disgraceful or the uh, wrong behaviors of her husband and endures that, that she gets the reward of uh, and the, what the man who is patient with the rudeness and so on of his wife, that he gets the reward of? No, not Lut. That's not the way I heard it. Of? Anybody know? Of? Ayyub alayhi salam. Ayyub was very patient. Uh, and his wife also was, was patient. But in any case, so what other, what other ones? So this was an example where there was a mismatch. And sometimes, even if you take all the personality profile tests and you go to all the... Sometimes you end up with a strange situation. And it works both ways. You can have a man who is, who is a very good khuluq. Even though we say yes, but you will see this in reality, this situation. A man or a woman and they're just totally uh, disconnected. How does a person deal with that? What does a person do? Again, these are just some of the headlines. But what about the first pair of husband and wife? Adam and Hawa, alayhi wassalam. So this is a positive example for us, right? Positive example for us, how? Let's take a little bit of time, because they're the first example for the uh, family, for the water, making cohesion, right? Um, and so, if you look at both of them together, Sakina, Muwadda, Rahma, we heard from Surah al Rum that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the tranquility, the attraction, they're attracted to each other, and also the mercy and compassion. But you also see that they sinned together, but they also repented together. Right? And so it's showing us the model of how the man and the woman, both of them, are creatures that are flawed, and both of them are creatures that have the capacity to be redeemed by making tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we say, Rabbana? What do we say? When we say, Rabbana, Walamna, and Fusana, what is the original ayah in which surah? We hear the dua a lot, right? Rabbana, Walamna, and Fusana, wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna, wa kunna wa khasin. Which surah is that in? Should have made a trivia night tonight. In surah 10, Rabbana, Walamna, and Fusana, wa illam taghfir lana. The story is in Baqarah, but also the story is repeated in surah 10. A'raf, right? So when, who are saying Rabbana Zalamna, both of them together? Husband and wife making tawbah to Allah together. Rabbana Zalamna and Fusana, wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakulanna min al-khasirin. So this is a, a clear, good model that we can say, that we can uh, find. In terms of 21st century reality, because that was the rest of the title and we're going to look at some other relationships but I wanted to start with that one and we'll see what's going on with the time here shortly but at least maybe to, to whet our appetites to go to the Quran to extract some of this and connect it to our realities so in the 21st century reality between husband and wife uh, we know that um, it used to be uh, whether fortunately or unfortunately a lot of a lot of Muslim scholars sometimes they, they would like to beat up on the West and point to how high the divorce rate is and so on. But subhanAllah, uh, we're seeing that divorce rate amongst Muslims is sometimes matching, even surpassing uh, non-Muslims. So, the Quran is giving the example of Adam and Hawa sticking together even through they, they sinned and then they repented together. How about between husband and wife? Again, we all have experiences, we all know people who have other things going on, but this is a, a big challenge that we face today, right? which is to get the two people to actually stay together. Uh, obviously, you know, I'm not in this community, so I don't know the stories going on here, but every community has its stories. Uh, I can remember I did one nikah one day, and subhanAllah, the next day they came, they want, and they want to get a divorce. And, you know, the, it was the family of, of the girl. You know, this is also another big issue about these kind of uh, overlapping interference. Family of the girl was one pressuring them to, uh, we need to get a divorce or else in these kind of things. So it's a, it's a very difficult uh, thing to see. And there are reasons behind it. Again, you know, this is, this is not an exhaustive uh, research by any means. But it's important for us as a community 
to, alhamdulillah, many of us, most of us, I think everybody here is highly educated, uh, to use whatever sociological uh, research we can, whatever empirical data we can gather, whatever combination between the divine and revealed knowledge and between the acquired knowledge that we can to address these situations. So at lunch with the brothers, you know, one of them was saying, I don't know what I want to do. And I recommended to him, you know, why, why not go into social work? Why not go into counseling? Uh, and this is a big need. Uh, again, the common, common thing is, well, uh, it's my own problem. But in the countries where people, a lot of Muslim immigrants are coming from, uh, they, they have other networks that give them support. Whereas here, we have to support uh, one another. In any case, you can think of other examples for husband and wife. So, uh, you can think of uh, how Khadija Prophet Muhammad But let's move on just so we at least touch on some of these. So, how about brothers in the Quran? So, let's start with uh, a bad relationship between brothers in the Quran. Habib and Qabil. How bad was it? Why did he kill him? Just because he felt like killing him? Where did, where did that come from? Did it start with just, oh, I want to kill my brother, he just woke up one day. Where did that come from? Envy, right? And hasid that developed into this hatred. That how could Allah accept from him anything except from me? That he had this sense of uh, entitlement. And when he sees that his brother was favored by Allah over him, because his brother gave the best of what he had to sacrifice. Um, and the Tafsir, they also talk about issues about marrying, marrying the opposite of the twin sister, etc. But from the, again, from the Quran itself, from the Quranic text itself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted from the offering of the one who gave with sincerity and the best and didn't accept from the other one. So it got to the point where he killed his brother. Okay, how about a positive, supportive example of brothers in the Quran? Yeah. Oh, I saw that. Everybody has a Musa at home. Is there any other brothers, supportive brothers? All right, let's go back to the next. What's the other negative example? Because there's a redemptive quality in the other example. Uh, uh, Yusuf brothers. Yeah, Yusuf and his brothers. Such a complex relationship. All right. But at the end, uh, that's cool, man. You guys don't have to waste paper anymore. You just put it on your little. Pad there. Um, so, so at the end, so the good thing again, go back to the story of Yusuf, and look at that, uh, and and look at see how how that family relationship, what's going on, and that water and what's going on, and Subhanallah, you know, water by itself is uh, is neutral, right? Even uh, we we think that water conducts electricity, but actually, if water was pure water, which doesn't exist. Uh, it wouldn't even be able to conduct electricity, right? But it's because of the particles, the, the impurities, the things in it that, could, that conduct these, these, this electricity. So in any case, look at that relationship as well. How about father and son? Many in the Quran. Father and son relationships. Okay, what would you say is characteristic of the relationship between Ibrahim and Ismail? This is a very positive one. I, I can't see anything negative in that uh, depiction in the Quran. But Ibrahim is my Islam. What is it? So many. Building the Kaaba together. So the father empowering his son. He's not saying, oh, you know, beta, just go eat pizza with the other kids. We'll eat the biryani here. <laughs> Take care of the real stuff. And you go play with your Legos. And he's like 15 years old. Why are you telling him to play with Legos? The Prophet Sallam was sending him out into battle, leading armies at 17, 18, and he's still playing with his Xbox. I mean, I like to play video games too, right? But, uh, but this, this idea of, oh, they're like little kids. No, he empowered his son, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recognized that. And what's the other example? So we said building the Kaaba together. With your father Ibrahim al-Qawa'ad iman bayti wa Isma'il rabbana. Again, together. Cohesion connected. Taqabbal minna. Working together. What else? How about? Yeah, sacrifice. I need to watch out about the editing of this. <laughs> okay, so uh, the sacrifice. What happened? Now the biblical narration is different than the Quranic one, by the way. Uh, but from the Quranic narration, uh, what happens before the sacrifice? 
consults him. He consults him, right? So he's validating uh, who he is as a person. And how does his son respond? So the son giving strength to the father to follow the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And father executing the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What beautiful examples, right? So we need to bring those into that, into the reality. In terms of the 21st century reality, I would say that even the reality, when we say the word reality, we think it's all negative. But even in reality, I've seen subhanAllah with my own eyes, you know, fathers who behave in this way with their uh, sons or daughters in this very empowering fashion, very open fashion. And uh, they, subhanAllah, you see them, and you can't even tell that they look more like brothers rather than uh, one is the parent and one is the, the son or daughter. In some cultures, they say, how can, how can that be? You know, it has to give this way. But you can still be very respectful. And also, there's reciprocal relationship and supportive relationship in the son and the father's son, um, or daughter and the father, etc. So in any case, um, uh, one of the examples that's really important that I want to talk about, uh, at least mention in passing, uh, is what Allah SWT describes, the biggest concern for the fathers and parents. So your parents, maybe you think, oh, uh, they just want us to succeed and get good grades and all this. But listen to the biggest concern of the parents. He said, uh, أَمْ كُنْتُمْ شُهَدَاءِ حَضَرَ يَعْقُوبَ الْمَوْتُ إِذْ قَالَ لِبَنِيهِ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِ قَالُوا نَعْبُدُ إِلَهَكَ وَإِلَهَ آبَائِكَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَاعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ إِلَهًا وَاحِدًا وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ Very touching scene. Yaqub is on his deathbed. He's the grandson, right? That's the Nasr. Grandson for Prophet Ibrahim And now he has his own children. He's seeing their children, Yaqub so he's on his deathbed, and all of his sons are surrounding him. Right? And what does he say? He said, "Hadra Yaqub al Maut." He said, "Death became present, uh, meaning it's in the room, ready to take his soul." And what was his biggest concern? Right? He said, "Ma ta'abuduna What will you worship after me? Right? Um, and their response, beautiful response. Na'budu ilahaka, we worship your God, not because of patriarchal reasons, but because it's the haq, your God, and the God of your fathers, and they mentioned Ibrahim, Ismail, Ishaq, etc. But also in the Qur'an, just so that we are at least uh, thorough as we come to the conclusion, inshallah. Um, how about mother-son relationships in the Qur'an? Yes? You all said it? Musa? Musa is his mother. So what can you all extract? from that relationship. Relationship between Musa alayhi mother and Musa, Musa alayhi himself. Hmm. Why did she throw him into the Yem? Why did she throw him into the stream? Into the river or the stream, whatever you want to call it. Yes, why? Because she didn't like it anymore? Oh, to save, to save her son. So the natural relationship, especially for the mother, subhanAllah, they have this connection with whether their son or daughter, where immediately they can feel this danger, something is wrong. And so, right, my mother uses it all, I mean, all the time. She's like, what happened? What's wrong? Like, nothing happened. <laughs> and she's like, oh, I saw in a dream this and this happened. Like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> it's actually, it's subhanAllah. A lot of times it turns out to be true. So the mothers that have this special sense about, oh, my son, my daughter is in danger, right? And this relationship and the reciprocal uh, honor for the mother, of course, from the hadith, uh, ummuk thumma ummuk thumma ummuk, then thumma abak, your mother three times, then your uh, father. Uh, again, uh, just more introduction to this topic, I hope that you study it further, inshallah ta'ala. Just look at those relationships. Um, and how about mother and daughter in the Qur'an? Mother and daughter. We said mother and son. How about mother and daughter? Let's see which one you can. Um, Alhamdulillah, I had some coffee before I came, so I'm awake. You probably guys didn't have coffee. So. How about mother and daughter in the Qur'an? Musa's sister and her mother. Okay, 
Yes, that's one. Yeah. And so how she was, the 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 daughter is assisting and allaying the fear of her mother by actually going out to look after her brother. Okay. Uh, so that would be a good example. What else? Maryam and her mother. Yeah, Maryam السلام, and her mother. So what was her mother doing? Well, Mary, even though she thought it was going to be a boy, but even when she gave birth, she continued to make dua for her. Uh, what was she doing? Making dua for her daughter. So we can, we, again, we can say the word reality and just say, oh, he's saying, oh, their families are all messed up now. But what the Quran is here to do is to be opened up and actually become the reality. Now we say the same way that uh, Maryam Maryam's mother is making dua for Maryam, we see also our mothers making dua for their children even when they're in their womb, right? So how about uh, father and daughter? Father and daughter. Oh, now let me expand it. Let's say not just in the Quran, let's say in the Sunnah. Father and daughter, I think now you'll know the one that I'm looking for. <laughs> Who? The Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and Fatima Yes, that's correct. So, you all know the hadith, but just to mention it again, they, the Sayyidina Aisha عنها, the wife of the Prophet وسلم, said that I didn't see anybody with more similar mannerisms to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, than Fatima Like the way that the Prophet would carry himself, she would carry herself in a similar manner. Even down to how he walked. You know, everybody has their walk, right? Nobody here has a ghetto walk or something, not a walk like that. Uh, so even how the Prophet Muhammad would walk, she walked in a similar manner. Right? And whenever she would come to visit the Prophet وسلم, he had a place which was designated for him to sit. He would stand up and he would welcome his daughter. Even though she was, uh, you know, now in adult, he would stand up and then he would, out of honor, let her sit in his place. Also, the narration says that he would kiss her on her forehead. SubhanAllah. Such love. And again, I didn't collect the statistics, but uh, in a previous khutbah I gave, uh, there was a statistic that correlated um, uh, women who, uh, who end up in uh, really disastrous sort of relationships and dysfunctional relationships and have uh, you know, children out of wedlock and all kinds of different abusive situations. And how, how much time their father spent with them. So there was a study about that showed, and it's very obvious, the more time that the father spends actually with his daughters, uh, then the more confident they are and the less likely they are to end up in uh, certain abusive and negative uh, kind of relationships. So this is a, a very important one. And, and the reciprocal thing happened as well. Whenever the Prophet so said, I'm going to go to Fatima, she would stand up for him. I mean, it's such a loving relationship, so many examples there. Um, also, we, uh, you know, just in a, in a cursory way, uh, we know that this is the scene in Yawm al Qiyam, right, in terms of the reality right now. But the scene in Yawm al Qiyam is Yawm Yafir al Maru Min Akhi. So the, the water is supposed to be coming together, but in Yawm al Qiyam, everything is gone. يوم يفر المرء من أخيه وأمه وأبيه وصاحبته وبنيه why لكل بني منهم يوم إذن everybody's busy with something else right that's يوم القيامة that's that's understandable right but the 21st century reality because of the wrong notion and wrong concept that people are just individual automatons that can be molded to fit some sort of production cycle and schedule, men and women, to just make a society that continues to produce and consume. And that this is an individual person. This is, again, this is a, a very big area. Everybody's in their own little world. And subhanAllah, even, even you know, I see it, I have a, a, a little daughter. And we try to interact, but she's she's got her own YouTube videos that she watches, you know, Curious George, whatever it is. And I'm watching Jazeera, and my wife is watching something else, and, they were, and everybody starts. And unless you make a reverse effort, right? Again, we talk about entropy. So, entropy, what is the law of entropy? There you go, there you go. What is the law of entropy? Increasing disorder. Increasing disorder, unless what? 
unless what? You, you put in energy, right? And then you're delta S, okay, guys, never mind. So uh, <clears throat> we have to put that energy to bring the families back together. And so even though I really want to see, uh, let's say, for example, did Texas win or lose, uh, alhamdulillah, we won last night, uh, Texas win or lose the basketball game, and you know I feel tired coming home from work, whatever it is, and then I see my daughter wants to also play, it's very easy, very tempting for me just to give her, you know, the iPad or whatever is okay, just go. And if I want to make myself feel better, I'll let her watch, you know, some sort of Arabic cartoon, so at least she's learning Arabic or something like this. But how much more valuable would it be to try to establish a connection there in the family? Right? And so that we need to realize that our master is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our master is not our jobs. Our master is not the society around us. Our master is not people's opinions. Right? You all know the story of, of, of Juha, right? Where he was with his son. And uh, I think I probably have one minute. It's going to be kind of awkward to conclude with the Juha story. But um, his son, right? Uh, who? This is a, the example of a person who's just trying to please everybody else. And then ends up fragmented. So he's walking with his son and a donkey. And so he's riding on the donkey. And his son is walking. And so some people see him and say, oh, what a cruel father. He, he's on the, <laughs> riding on the donkey and making his son walk in the hot sun like this. And so when Juha heard this, then he said, oh, the people, they don't like this. So what did he do? He had his son ride the donkey. And he was walking. <laughs> then the next group of people he passed by, what did they say? What an insolent son. <laughs> What's wrong with this boy? He's making his father walk. <laughs> And he's writing up. And John said, oh, what is this? I can't do anything. So this is having too many masters, right? Instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, go to the Qur'an and to the tradition of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Everything is clearly there. So then uh, the son also gets off the donkey. And so Juha and his son are walking and the donkey is by itself. And they're walking side by. And the next group of people, what did they say? Yeah, what, did you, what do you think the people said? Yeah. Yeah, what a way. Did you hear this story before? Oh man, okay. MashaAllah. He has the adab of the ilm. The adab of the ilm is even if you heard something, you act like you didn't hear it. You know, like you're hearing it for the first time, mashallah. So he said, Why are they wasting this donkey? You know, they're both walking and nobody is riding the donkey. What a waste. So uh, what happens uh, the next step before the last step? They both ride on top of the donkey, right? And then uh, PETA comes out, right? Uh, people for the ethical treatment of animals. And I said, oh, what is this? <laughs> so cruel to the animals. They have no rahmah to the donkey. <laughs> it's, it's the donkey's uh, back is uh, gone. Both of them riding. So uh, now since you told us you know the story, what did they do at the end? MashaAllah, good job. So, so they end up both of them carrying the, the donkey. And even though this is a funny story, uh, a lot of people, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, they really don't know what they're supposed to be doing in their life. They're being pulled this way, that way. They think it's supposed to be like this, or like this, or like this, like that. And SubhanAllah, what is, the, what is the tether for us? Right? What is the tether? What is the anchor? Right? Uh, the habl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muslim Mufassiri, I mean, there's many different interpretations. Muslim Mufassiri say the habl of Allah is the Quran itself. Right? Um, so, if we go back to our holy book and go to the beautiful example of our blessed messenger Muhammad وسلم, and the best generations um, and then apply it to our unique situations and our unique circumstances um, in a way that is in the same sense, relevant to our time today, but also not disconnected from the light and from the beauty uh, that was given to us uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through our Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are a few other things, but uh, I just wanted to recommend, uh, please try to establish you know, a family uh, ta'aleem time, even if it's five, 10 minutes uh, a day, or you just specify a schedule. We said in the khutbah, that winners uh, make commitments and losers make promises. 
So make a commitment, get everybody in the house to commit, whether they're fighting or not, or upset or happy or not. And say, okay, every Thursday, every Wednesday, or whatever, some people every day, at least once a week, even once a month, if it's not going at all, going on at all, is to say, okay, we're just going to sit down. We're not all of us, we're going to just sit down and read Quran together. <laughs> and we'll look at some of the meetings. We'll sit down and read, read all the Salahim together. <laughs> this is very important that the husband and wife are doing that and the children are doing that with them, seeing them doing that, engaging in them. Uh, and this is that, inshallah ta'ala, that energy to uh, reverse uh, the uh, process of going to more and more randomness and disorder. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu uh, wa ta'ala also to give us the, the family of Iman, uh, which is the family, for the Quranic example, Ashab al Muhajirin and Ansar, this is also another uh, area to talk about. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect uh, our families from all that is evil. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to uh, make us of those who enter Jannah by fulfilling our responsibilities and by being true and sincere to anybody uh, that is uh, in our charge. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to bless all of you uh, here uh, in your studies, mashallah, in your families and to protect you against all of the fitan, ma dhahara minha wa ma batan, whatever is apparent of the fitna, whatever is uh, hidden of the fitan. Jazakumullah khayran, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, nashadu an la ilaha illa anta, nastaghfiruka wa natu ulaik. Glory is for Allah, with praise for Him. We testify that none is to be worshipped except for Him. We ask Him for forgiveness and we turn to Him in repentance. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Is it at that time already? If it is at that